Hello, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Taylor, and I am a recently graduated animation, well, professional now. Um, I do primarily 2D and stop motion, not so much 3D, but that's okay. Uh, the image you see on your screen right now is um, a competition piece, actually. Um, the Overwatch League hosted a fan art competition uh, that featured the Shanghai Dragons and Seoul Dynasty. Uh, the only prompt that it gave us was, show us your fan art with dragons and tigers elements. So, here's my fan art with dragons and tigers elements. Um, going into this, I didn't have a, a solid as solid idea of what I exactly wanted to do. Uh, one of my friends told me about this uh, a few days before the competition was up, so I, I had to scramble to put something together. Uh, so you'll see in the video that a lot of it is uh, me just throwing something at a canvas and hoping that it stuck. Um, that's okay. Uh, that's that's the fun part of art, the experimentation of it. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this speed paint. Uh, I probably messed up the text on it horribly. I don't speak Korean or Chinese, and my resources were uh, pretty limited. So I, I did the best I could with uh, what I could put together, what I could find. Um, so. All right, so here we go, my little canvas. Um, I, the only, f the few things I did know that I wanted uh, going into this was I wanted it to be pixel art and I wanted the dragon to look like uh, an oni, kind of have that oni kind of face. I know none of these teams are Japanese, but I thought it was cool. Um, so pixel art to harken back to 8-bit video games, uh, old school kind of video games. <laughs> so as you see here, I started blocking in the head and realized I couldn't see it, so it went yellow. Um, but just blocking everything in, hoping something works, hoping something looks <laughs> looks good. Um, so I, I really enjoy doing pixel art. I've done a couple pieces pixel art before, um, and I, I really like how it looks. I think it's cool. Um, it's a lot easier than people would think. It's a lot like just straight up drawing, um, and I think people don't realize that part of it is that it's just drawing. Um, people think you have to build it up like block by block, brick by brick, like in Minecraft, and that's not true. You just get to draw. <laughs> and if it looks good, you keep it. If it doesn't, you get rid of it. It's just like any other drawing. Um, and I think, I think that's why it's, it's kept me coming back. I did one piece, um, my icon that I use for everything is pixel art. That was like the first-ish one I've done. And I was like, oh, this is going to be so hard, whatever, I want to try it. So I, I looked up kind of like some aspect ratios to use for it. And uh, I've been hooked ever since. I, I really, I really enjoy it. I really enjoyed this one. <clears throat> I was really proud of how that tail turned out, but um, I, uh, you don't end up seeing it. So that's <laughs> it's kind of disappointing, but, um, well, you know, whatever. I'll take what I can get. Um, I was really, I was really solid on on the dragon. Um, the tiger was way harder, um, as you'll see. It just takes up more room, and there was just more to it. Um, but I was really happy with how the dragon turned out. It was a simple design. You know, it was bold. It was it was cool. Uh, I was really, I was really into it. And uh, you'll see here. I'll start the tiger. I start blocking in its head, just like the dragon. I started a little more complex than I probably had wanted to, but I, you know, it turns out okay in the end. I find that's, that's my biggest downfall in most of the art I make is I start too complex. I got to start simple and just get down the basics, the basic idea of what I, what I want to accomplish. But, uh, I didn't have too, too much time to play, <laughs> to play it out for this one. I had about, had about three days since I, I had heard about uh, the competition and when everything was was due for and um, I ended up having probably a little bit more time than I had thought I was going to but all in all this project took me about two days of solid work with regular breaks and not working into the night while well, I was working into the night but not too bad not like school <laughs> so the tiger I was I didn't know at all what it, what it was going to look like, and it ended up looking really cool, like, the first try. I got so lucky <laughs> on this tiger. 
Um, I was really happy with how it turned out. I had a really awesome reference for that, like, roar, growl, tiger face scrunch thing. So I, I was rocking and rolling on that. I didn't, I had no idea what I wanted the body to look like. Uh, it was in the front, so I wanted something bold and a, a really cool, dynamic kind of, of pose. So I knew I wanted to have one paw swiping. Uh, I didn't quite know what the other one was doing. So I ended up having one, the other paw swiping and the other one just coming at you. Tiger paw coming at you. Oh God. Anyway. Yeah, I was really happy with how that turned out. Um, I think I end up moving it. Nope, I don't end up moving it. It's just that big, um, kind of a jumping pose. Crouching tiger. Nope, jumping tiger. The colors are really easy to pick. I, I mean, I started, I mean, it's a tiger and a dragon. Dragons, nobody knows what looks like and what they look like. And tigers, everybody knows what they look like. So I, I feel like I was able to get away with more on the dragon than I was the tiger. I really had to make the tiger solid because it was a recognizable figure and people really know what a tiger looks like. But it's okay if I, if I took some liberties and freedoms on the dragon because they're not, they're not real. Tigers are real, however. So I had to really focus in on that one and make it look good. And I often find that when you make art of uh, real things, if you're doing anything moderately close to, to reality, it's very difficult because people know what they look like. And if you mess up one thing, it kind of just plunges straight into that uncanny valley where it's kind of there and kind of off regardless um but you know it's whatever it's art you can do what you want um but yeah I started started putting in stripes and then I tried to put them there and I was like no that's too much uh the thing I so I learned a lot about tigers during this project and one thing is is that don't put too many stripes on them because then it just looks muddy and uh, it, it, everything gets lost and looks ridiculous. I'm probably looking at memes here. I don't know why nothing's there. We go. Nothing's happening. Oh, it's because I was looking at my reference to see uh, what tiger paws actually looked like. Um, and I realized they have five toes instead of four. So I had to redo the paw, the right paw, your left. Stage. Stage left? Stage right? I don't know. I'm not a theater kid. Um, so I just, you know, I put that in really quick. Shit. Oh, that was because I put all, everything on the wrong layer. All the, the stripes and the coloring I did was on the wrong layer, but it's luckily an easy fix if you know your way around Photoshop. And then there we go, the, the fifth paw, or the fifth toe. Sketching in the feet. Oh, it took me so long to determine whether or not I wanted claws on the feet. Not like so long, but I was like, should I, should I not? Like I debated a long time about it. Even when I was just like drawing in the face, I'm like, should I put extra claws on this? And I ended up doing it. All right, so now's the boring part. Uh, we get into cleanup. And what I do for pixel art specifically is I zoom in a little closer so you can see every individual pixel. And then I'll just take the move tool and highlight the boxes I want to end up filling. Just color filling. Um, it's tedious, and that probably took up 65% of this drawing was just to clean up for it. But I mean, the, the tiger and the dragon are finished, um, so I just it's just clean up at this point. And uh, it's long and tedious and sometimes boring, but I don't know what's happening here. I'm probably looking at memes again. Oh, no, I might be highlighting it. I just couldn't see it. Yeah, you, you kind of just clean up. There's no like right or wrong way to do it. Um, sometimes with pixel art, when you just use a brush, you get like fall out or, or it just gets, the, the, the boxes around it get slightly stained with the, the color you're using. So it's, you know, make sure to go in and clean up the edges, make them really bold and sharp and make them stand out and pop off the canvas and, oh, making them look angry. Um, 
so yeah, I realized I had to change the the uh, color of the underbelly because uh, everything on its face was blending in with the back of it, and I was like, no, I can't, I can't have that. So I changed it slightly darker. I just darkened it a little bit. I think I pushed it toward uh, a little toward orange to match the tiger below it. Oh, I also debated for a long time whether I was going to do the back fins on the dragon. Um, I clearly ended up doing it, but it's a lot, and I think you lose it in some places, um, especially because most of it's blocked by a, dra or a tiger and its own face. But it looks cool. <laughs> it looks cool after the fact, uh, but, you know, whatever. I had a lot of fun with this one. I There was no limitations or restrictions. It was kind of the first big art piece that I've been able to do that wasn't for school. It was very freeing. Um, I love the Shanghai Dragons so much. Uh, so I was, I was happy to do this. The hand too. I think before I started on the hand, I had gone to sleep. Um, and I had come back. So like now we're on to day two. Um, and I come back and I was like, mm, the dragon's missing something. So I just, I like ripped through some, uh, uh some references really quick, uh, the morning before I, I got back on to do this. And, um, I realized that sometimes the dragons have hands and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to throw one in. And I ended up liking it. Um, it kind of like echoed the dragon or the tiger's, uh, uh pose itself. So I was like, okay, this is, this is fine. So like their opposite claws are ready to strike. I guess, <laughs> but no, I had a good time with that one. Uh, I would have loved to have more, uh, the other hand more visible, but there was no good place to put it where it would help the silhouette. So I just kind of put in the, the back elbow of it there um, and hoped that it was enough. A um, little more cleanup going on. Yeah, see, so you just fill it in and, and the silhouette or the, uh, the edges, I'm sorry. Well, I guess the edges of the... Uh, areas of color just become so much more bold and sharp and clean looking. It's really nice. <laughs> it's a lot of work um, and it's probably a way better way to do that. People are probably like, oh, just use the, uh, the, the, what is it, the magic wand tool and just group them all in. Sure, but you're still going to have cleanup anyway because those tools aren't Perfect. And with this one, I can pick exactly which pixels I want to use instead of just using the the computer guess for me. I'd rather have more control, and it didn't matter. I had, I didn't have, I didn't think I had time, but I had the time, so it's okay that I I, I was fine with just going in and cleaning everything up uh, on a a really intimate and individual kind of scale. Um, Additionally, too, I think at this point I was putting off having to do a background <laughs> because I had no idea what I was going to do for a background. Uh, so I just ended up taking as much time as I could making it look clean. But it's also important to make it look clean for the, uh, the actual composition of it. I'm so glad that I made that hat on an extra layer um, because, wow. <laughs> See, I'm learning. I'm learning, guys. <laughs> Make everything separate. You want to try something new? Make another layer. It's fine. It's Photoshop. It doesn't matter how many layers you have. It might matter how many layers you have. I don't know. But, you know, you're allowed to play around and have fun and be free. Yeah, this part's fun. Uh, this really just kind of makes the dragon just pop so much more and cleaning it up. I realized that one of those things was way shorter than the other. So I think I ended up deleting it entirely. Um, and then I just kind of redo it. <laughs> See, pixel art's really fun because if you do one thing really well on one side, you can just kind of mirror it. Because um, <laughs> a lot of it is really uh, symmetrical. Um, not always, sometimes. Um, it's better to do odds than evens with, with pixel art, I've found, because with evens, it's not a perfect split. You're split on a barrier and not on a line of pixels, which is kind of screwy sometimes. So that's, a, that's your tip for pixel art, is always do odds, not evens. This part I'm a little disappointed in because I think I lost a little bit of character um, on the nose of the dragon uh, from the initial start to, to the finished product. And, you know, sometimes that happens. Um, you just kind of futz around with something and you, uh, 
you go too far into it. You can't exactly go back to, to what you had. So for something like that, I would suggest just hitting uh, Control or Command J, making a new layer for it. If you don't end up liking it, delete it, start again. Uh, but I, you know, whatever. It's fine. I don't hate it. It's okay. Um, I, I do like the character of the uh, the first draft of the nose, I suppose, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> I didn't ruin it. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll accept it. Is it just a fine, fine human? I didn't know which one I liked better, so it looked like it was headbanging for a second. <laughs> just going in and uh, making sure those horns are nice and clean, just really defining the silhouette. Yeah, this one was just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Add a little shine, a little shine on the uh, the curves of the dragon, just to add a little bit of dimension to it. Um, that's the fun thing with pixel art is a lot of times, well, maybe not fun, but a lot of times it looks really flat. Um, so you kind of have to. The only thing you have, I mean, the only thing you have with two D art in general is is color differentiation, um, and that's that's what makes things look three-dimensional it's how you draw things in perspective and color differentiation um, what is it called atmospheric differentiation maybe or atmospheric something where everything far away from you like super far away from you is way lighter than things right up close um, but things that are still kind of close are lighter I, I don't know it's it's weird it's a really weird thing um, but I had just imagined that the back of the dragon was in shadow to make some other things look really close up. Um, just cleaning up the tiger. There was so much cleanup on this tiger. Um, I, I ended up not, I don't know. There was a lot to do for the tiger. Um, I like to say that took up, like, this whole segment of video was, like, two and a half hours just clean up uh, for the dragon and the tiger. See, look at that, though. Just It just makes those stripes just so much more crisp and clean. I love it. I love it. And it is a lot of work, but it makes such a big difference, and it's so worth it <laughs> just to clean up your edges and make everything just so much more bold and careful looking. Gotta make those toe beans look clean. Yeah, love it. It was fun. I got to paint a cute little tiger paw. I had a great time. This was a great art piece. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Just draw yourself a tiger. Clean up bottom of it. Yeah, it just, it just looks so less fuzzy and uh, I don't know. I love it. It's great. It's like magic. <laughs> you know, just like highlight delete and everything's just so much more bold and has way more character. Oh, that's another thing. The only thing I needed or I, I wanted to do and include for the tiger was the the Soul Dynasty's tiger icon, if you've ever seen it, has like the that pattern on its forehead. And apparently it's a it's a character that means something. So it was important that I at least got like some kind of element of it in there. It's not perfect by any means, and it's only probably three Two quarters of it, two thirds of it. There we go. Two quarters of it. Two thirds of the actual character, but um, I don't know. I it seems important to the design aspect of their actual icon, so I I tried to put those little like uh indents for where the whiskers are, but I made them way too even. Like it looked too. It just looked wrong. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Making it just so even like that. Um. It kind of cut out any kind of uh, volume or, or dimension to the uh, the like tiger cheeks at that point. It just looked flat and it looked incorrect. So I, I started to 
make them look like they were rounding out and and pointing back up like the face was pulling them up too so that's that was my decision for that <clears throat> The whiskers are uneven. Yes, I know I wanted it to be. Cleaning up on the face for the tiger was hell. There's just so many different colors that you have to watch out for um, in that area. And uh, any any wrong click could have could have made it look really really bad, actually. So I wanted to make sure that um, I was keeping the character of the stripes and the color um, along with just making it look as clean as I could. Um, and it worked out pretty pretty good, I'd say. I'd say. Um, somebody else might say something different, but I'm biased. It's my art. Probably looking at memes here. <laughs> Lull and productivity. Here we go. Bring the tiger back. Uh, yes, this is where... I think this might be where I start putting in an inkling of a background. So I wanted to have this circle um, because I, I wanted it to look kind of like an old like Japanese movie poster. And I feel like they use a lot of circles and that's it. So this is my horrible attempt at trying to do something that I don't understand. I tried to write Seoul Dynasty in Shanghai Dragons. I have no idea if that's at all what it says. Um, I had hoped. <laughs> I had hoped. Yep. I knew I needed something cool for the background. A, a cooler color. And I think I ended up going with like a really warm purple anyway. Um, so I completely ruined all. Yeah. But um, I wanted the, the circle to actually be something that looked like the Overwatch logo. And I ended up doing like a neon sign version of uh, the Overwatch logo. I think is what I actually stick with. Yeah. Yep. I think that's exactly what I do. So it was just uh, arcade-themed all over the place. Sorry, my dock is up. There we go. It goes away. It was really fun. I, I really like neon and pixel art. I think it looks cool. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, electric boogaloo. Um, I, I think you lose more of it than I had wanted to in the final product, but if you watch the speed paint, you'll know exactly what I was doing. And then I flip it because the, the warmth was all up top with the dragon, um, so I had to flip that because it looked stupid. Um, again, my, my sorry attempt for trying to write Chinese and Korean. Um, I tried. It's probably not at all what I wanted it to say, but it... I tried. <laughs> it looks cool regardless. <laughs> yeah, no, like I said, there's horrible, horrible resources out there for language. And I, I think it inspired me a little bit to, to learn more, to, to be more careful and to actually put in the effort to, uh, to try to learn. I just drew a saxophone and put some things next to it, really, for that character. <laughs> But uh, anyway, it's it's inspired me to, to learn more and to be mindful and careful and definitely do more research before I'm ready to <laughs> commit on something that's going to be seen by probably a lot of people and a lot of people who speak this language. At least the Korean. I don't know how much of the uh, Overwatch players are Chinese. I think Gu Shui is Chinese. And then... Ameng is Chinese. There's probably a couple more than I actually know. Um, but, yeah. So, yeah, this sparked my, uh, Taylor's gonna learn Korean. <laughs> Whatever. Phase, probably. Languages are hard. Languages are really hard. So people who speak more than one, or more than two, Jesus, can you imagine? Probably a lot of people do, but still. That's really impressive. Oh, for this, uh, for this uh, um, section of the, the speed paint, I was just putting in the text. Hopefully it says uh, Shanghai Dragons and Seoul Dynasty. Probably doesn't. I probably should have tried harder. Um, 
But like I said, there's really limited resources um, that are available to someone trying to look up uh, languages. And there's probably really awesome websites that I just missed out on. Um, but, you know, here we go. And then I knew I was just going to uh, outline them in their team colors. Uh, nothing fancy, nothing super special. Something really clean and simple that's going to look cool. Um, I didn't want to do anything super fancy. This was just a, just, a, just a pixel piece. This one was, this took a long time. Making sure that the lettering looked really clean because it looked so messy. <laughs> it was a lot to it. I think too, especially that I I crop out the uh, the canvas size before I did this. That it kind of threw off a little bit of the uh, the aspect ratio I was used to using, and everything just became so fuzzy. And <laughs> it looks crazy, uh, but I ended up getting it pretty clean, and I'm happy with most of how it turned out. And then I think, because in the final, you guys already saw the final product, and you saw that I didn't end up keeping this uh, background. And I think I decided, or I realized here, especially here, that I was so close to it. It looked too, it looked too not pixely. It didn't look, okay, it didn't look pixelated at all. Um, it was a nice, clean, even blended gradient. And I think it just looked, it looked off against the the sharp corners of the uh the the pixels so i think i end up scrapping it entirely for that reason and i just go with like a nice i go with a really warm purple actually i was like it has to be cool this whole time i was thinking i don't know what i'm gonna do for this background but it's got to be a cool color so that the really warm colors of the tiger and the dragon pop out i didn't end up going with a really warm purple um so you know whatever <laughs> it's fine i'm an artist i know what i'm doing So much cleanup. So, so much cleanup. I don't know what was happening. Oh, it's because I switched the color. I was like, I don't know why I made that purple. I don't know why I made that purple. I wish more companies and organizations like the Overwatch League did things like this. Because I had to see, this is me searching, like thinking. And that's not going to work, that's not going to work, that's going to work. Yeah, you saw it just like flash on and off, on and off. I was just trying to see which one I liked better, which one looked better. Um, initially, too, I think some of the Overwatch logo would have gotten swallowed if I had gone with blue and pink because the the neon for the arms of the, and the lines of the uh, logo were blue and pink. Sure, they were a little more electric, but that's okay. I, I think it would have been a little too overwhelming. Um, so I just kind of combined them and made it purple. But like I was saying before, um, I wish more organizations like the Overwatch League and, you know, just other really heavy fan-based things would would host more uh, art competitions like this. I had a blast doing this. And I hope that the people who other also participated in it also had a lot of fun because it was a lot of fun. Who doesn't want to draw a dragon and a tiger? Like, that's just cool. Uh, but I wish more people, uh, more organizations would do this because they're fun. Uh, they, they promote a lot more fan-based participation. Like, I feel so much... This is going to sound completely weird. I feel so much closer to the Overwatch League as a fan because I was able to, to contribute something to this giant crazy thing that's way bigger than myself um <laughs> but it was it was really nice and and I don't know I just had a lot of fun and I, I wish it would happen more often I would it would give me an excuse to draw something really cool more often <laughs> which is always always a plus save there we're on to the next uh I think this is this is probably like nine o'clock at night at this point and I realize that there are so many holes in my tiger and that I have to close them up so I spend like a good hour 
maybe 45 minutes just cleaning up the tiger face. I had to, I, so what I did is individually, I would put it on the dark, dark gray background because I thought it looked the best. And I kind of found spots where it was flickering through. And I went through pixel by pixel, highlighted the color of that pixel on that gray background and filled that one pixel that it occupied. So it took so long and there's probably a way better way to do that. And I actually think I end up thinking of a way better way. I think I actually end up making a stamp of the head uh, because I was like, no, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And um, I forgot that I could make a stamp of it. <laughs> That's all. Um, but you know, it's good to remember those things. So the two biggest tips I have for Photoshop drafting, Photoshop drawing, uh, or just, I guess, kind of 2D digital art in general. Know your buttons and know what the software is capable of. Those are the two biggest things. Like the effects that are in Photoshop are immense and impressive. Um, the things you can do in Photoshop are immense and impressive. <laughs> you can just do it. <clears throat> and know your buttons because it'll just make it easier. You don't have to go up to the toolbar and search for everything because that's a lot. That's ridiculous. Um, so just, you know, know your buttons and know the, um, yeah, know what, you're, what your software is capable of. It'll help you way more as an artist. It'll help you save time as an artist, which is often a very precious, precious thing. So I end up spending a long time doing this pixel by pixel and then... I get so frustrated because I remember that I can just make a stamp of it because I'm an idiot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's okay. I think you'll see me do it in a minute or so here. I'm like, oh, that's right. I remember how to do that. But I get, like, too far into it for it to, like, warrant me making a stamp of the head of the tiger. I think it's after I turn off the dragon and I realize, yeah, I was like, oh shit, I'm not about to do all of that again. So like I start on it and then I'm like, there's got to be a better way. And then the little light bulb pops up and I'm like, oh. You idiot. I end up saving myself like another half an hour or so. So there you go. <laughs> Just make see. There we go. I'm making a stamp. I can't remember how to do it. See, look at me. I'm thinking. I'm searching. I'm probably on the internet looking up a tutorial. <laughs> and then there we go. We get it. I got it. Made a stamp. And then I had to clean up around it so I deleted all the gray and then made a, a perfect stamp of just the head of the tiger and I end up using that for the rest of the uh yeah the rest of the uh drawing I just just the stamp yeah I lost some of the white there just put it back easy peasy There's me uh, using the logo to pick the specific gold that they use for their logo. I wanted it to look right. I didn't want it to look off. I thought I made the tiger a little bit more gold than a regular tiger. I thought I had at least, but it's still pretty orange. <laughs> it's fine. It looks right, so... I'll take it. This was a long, tedious process, too, because there were so many curves. There was so much surface area on the outside of those, um, I don't know, those characters. There's just so much to highlight and fill in. It took so long. That's okay. I did it to myself. I shouldn't complain.
Yeah, I wish I could, you know, comment more on the process, but that's, it's kind of over uh, at this point. Uh, I've done everything I've had to do. I double outline it in one of their team colors and then the other team color. I think I went light inside, dark outside, just so you could really see the silhouette of the uh, the letters. Pretty good. Because the white and then the yellow and the white and then the gold, they are really close in color space. So I, if I had just left it gold, you would have lost a lot of the, uh, the shape, the clean looking shape that you all crave, that I crave. I will kind of predict the future. There was probably another good half an hour um, of the end of this process that I, uh, I ended up not recording for because it was just me experimenting more. I don't know. And it was fine. You saw me floundering enough. You didn't have to watch me do it for another half hour or I guess like five minutes <laughs> in this case. But, um, yeah, it was a lot of just, I, I like redrew the, the Overwatch logo and I, I didn't, I didn't know if I was going to keep the uh, the neon looking one. I was like, I don't know about this one. Maybe I should try something else. So I ended up doing like the classic one in pixel art. And I was like, okay, it looks all right. But then I put it behind the drawing and it just looked like trash. So I wasted probably about a good half an hour doing something that I didn't end up keeping anyway. Um, but that's okay. Um, you know, that's that's part of the fun of it all. It's especially for something like this where it is a lot more experimental than anything. This was a whole experiment. It really was. And, um, you know, this is just the final product that you ended up got, you ended up getting from it. But, um, yeah, a lot of, a lot of art is, it's messy. It's, it's not concrete. It's a lot of trying and failing. My dog just dumped his peanut butter jar. Uh, it's a lot of trying and failing and, and seeing what's going to work and what's not going to work. Um, Hoping something works. I feel like that's more of it. Art's a lot of hope. Uh, hoping you get a job. Hoping <laughs> hoping that it looks right. Uh, no. And a lot of people are like, oh, you must be so talented. You, you know, it takes a lot of talent to make something like, like that. And I mean, sure. But talent is so overrated. You know how I got this good? I worked hard to get this good. You know what I'm saying? Talent, I don't feel like it, talent's such a, such a gray, a gray word. It's, it's, it has a lot of, a lot of, I don't know, a lot of mystery to it, a lot of unknown to it. Um, so this is me trying, this is the beginnings of me trying to figure out what the hell I wanted to do for a background. Um, oh, I know, this is where, this is where I resize it all. So in Photoshop, if you... You have to, in, in order to resize your uh, pixel art, you have to, uh, you have to image size it, and you have to make sure that the the pixels will retain their their sharpness once you, uh, once you blow it up, or move it, or shrink it, or whatever. Um, so there's like a special, a special thing you have to do in order to, to. Um, in order to be able to move it and resize it. And uh, so I, that's what I was doing for that. So I could move things around. See, that's me just, this is, I think, finally me trying to figure out w exactly what kind of background I was going to do. And then I ended up just going with the purple. Uh, like I said, there was probably about a, a good half hour of me just... Uh, trying to figure it out. But uh, once again, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I hope you enjoyed it.